thank you very much and thank you to the thank to thanks to the organizing committee for the opportunity to present their results. So today uh, I'm I will try to show you how we can obtain some uh, atomic scale uh, detail on the mechanisms of uh, anionic substitution in uh, some minerals. Uh, and my talk will mostly focus on the carbonate for phosphate substitution in apatite group minerals. Uh, and uh, I, had, I have added uh, some slides on the sulfate substitution in uh, also carbonate group minerals. Uh, these results have been obtained uh, by an interdisciplinary team. Uh, uh, composed of uh, EMPMC uh, with expertise in mineralogy and solid state physics, ESTEPS, ESTEP, uh, which bring expertise on geology and geochemistry, and LCMCP with uh, expertise in solid state chemistry and a lot of uh, NMR spectroscopy, and also uh, uh, collaboration with uh, SEMT on high field NMR spectroscopy. Uh, so in the first part, we will discuss mostly about carbonate substitution in apatite because, uh, as you know, carbonate is a very important impurity in apatite because it can, you can tune the macroscopic properties of the material uh, depending on the content of uh, carbonate uh, impurity. But uh, from our point of view, it's, uh, it is uh, also an important uh, trace marker of past environments because you can measure the isotopic composition of carbon and oxygen of carbonate impurities in apatite and record some information on uh, past environments. And the, 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 the basic question to, to in this approach is that you have to, to be sure that what you are, you are measuring in the fossil corresponds to what, was, uh, what occurred uh, during the life of the animal. And we are mostly interested, interested in the transformation of the biologic ma uh, material during fossilization uh, and during the, 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 the geological times. And an interesting property also of carbonite is that uh, it presents uh, very localized uh, vibrational modes at high frequency. So you can uh, use uh, infrared active uh, vibrational modes, and in particular, these vibrational modes in which the uh, carbon atom moves perpendicularly to the uh, carbonate plane. Uh, and uh, this relatively weak band is uh, not affected by macroscopic uh, electrostatic effects. And it is a real probe of the microscopic atomic scale uh, modification of the structure. And if you uh, observe the infrared spectra of uh, various samples from uh, biomaterial, recent material, and fossil samples, fossil enamel samples, uh, you can observe uh, variations, significant variations of the local environment of the carbonate group, uh, depending of an, uh, on the enrichment in a fluorine. Um, and this, uh, this, the appearance of this, this new signal here, which is really close to what is observed in a carbonate uh, fluor fluorapatite, a geologic carbonate fluorapatite, okay, is uh, clear evidence for uh, deep transformation of the material. And we, in my talk, I will mostly focus on the origin and significance of, of this signal. Indeed, if we uh, consider the, the crystal chemistry of impurities in apatite, uh, the, the apatite structure displays uh, various uh, potential uh, sites for substitution or modification. Um, and in most cases, uh, the, the incorporation sites of impurities are well identified. For instance, cationic substitutions uh, can affect the calcium sites. And in that case, we have some, uh, some semi-empirical models that can be uh, used uh, to, uh, for instance, predict the partition coefficients uh, of these impurities. Tetroidal, uh, Molecular groups can also uh, substitute for phosphate groups at the B site here. And also, you can observe uh, various anionic substitution in the uh, channel sites, here the A sites. Uh, quite interestingly, in fact, uh, is, uh, is that the carbonate for phosphate substitution uh, in the uh, tetroidal site uh, has to meet with uh, two, uh, two you, you have to answer two questions about this, this, this substitution. The first thing is that uh, you have to incorporate a triangular molecule in a tetroidal site. So you have some geometrical difference between the impurity and the crystal site. And also you have to comply with some uh, difference in electrostatic charge. And so you have to, uh, to have information on the uh, electrostatic charge balance mechanism. And because of these two difficulties, uh, the, the, the real microscopic structure of the carbonate site in fluorapatite uh, has been debated for almost uh, 50 years. And also, we, want, we, we will try to, 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 
to determine what is the significance of the appearance of this signal uh, in, the, in, the, in the fossils. Concerning the, the tools on uh, our, our approach, uh, we are trying to combine uh, uh, solid state spectroscopy, mostly in, in the present talk, low temperature transmission uh, for your transform infrared spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, and we will try to combine these uh, experimental tools with some ab initio modeling of carbonate defects at the density functional theory level uh, using uh, national uh, computing facilities. Okay. And I will mostly uh, present experimental results on uh, some reference sample of uh, carbonate fluorapatite, which is also called a francolite. And this sample comes from, uh, it is a natural sample from Senegal. It contains some weight percent of carbonate and few percents of other mineral impurities. Now, <coughs> if we have a look at the low temperature for a transform infrared spectrum, of this sample using uh, quite conventional transmission measurements. Uh, you, of course, observe the uh, various absorption bands corresponding to the internal modes um, of the molecular groups. Um, and if we uh, focus on uh, this peculiar mode that still correspond to uh, the uh, motion of the carbon atom perpendicular to the triangular plane, okay, we can see that uh, here the, the spectrum is in fact dominated by this very narrow signal. Okay, so the, uh, the, the spectrum uh, indicates that uh, you have a major contribution of B-type carbonite, about uh, 70 percent. Um, and also a very interesting observation is that uh, at low temperatures, the line width is uh, really narrow, about a few centimeters to the minus one, uh, which is a clear indication that uh, carbonate occur in a, in a defect site, but a with, a, with a very well-defined geometry. Okay. So we can gain some complementary information from uh, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, in which you can probe the lo local environment of the, of the carbon, for instance, using carbon-14 uh, NMR spectroscopy. And here again, you observe a, a single signal, an asymmetric signal, which is a clear indication that here again you have a major contribution of B-type carbonite, which is fully consistent with the infrared spectroscopy results. Okay. More interesting is that also you can probe the environment of the fluorine. Um, on concerning the fluorine, you observe a major signal here, quite broadened, but major signal which is related to the channel sites, the fluorine in the channel sites of the, of the apatite. Uh, but more surpri surprisingly, you observe a second site Okay, which does not correspond, uh, which corresponds to a second environment of fluorine in this sample. And this second signal was previously observed by these authors, but was not clearly interpreted. Okay. And this is very significant because it corresponds to about 8 to 10 percent of the total fluorine content. Um, and using uh, more advanced uh, nuclear magnetic resonance techniques, you can probe the interaction of this second environment of fluorine with its surrounding. Um, so here, using double quantum, single quantum NMR spectroscopy, you can see, of course, that the uh, channel fluorine ions, uh, ions uh, can see other channel fluorine ions, they interact. Also, the additional signal can couple with the uh, channel ions that indicates that this second fluorine environment uh, do occur in the apatite structure. But the interesting point is that the second fluorine environment does not interact with other ions in the same environment. That is clear indication that the second fluorine environment corresponds to isolated point defect in the apatite structure. Okay, and now by looking at the transfer of magnetization between fluorine and carbon, uh, Frank Fayon has been able to determine the, that uh, the second environment of fluorine ions was located close to carbon atoms uh, in the uh, apatite structure and he uh, has been able to estimate the distance between the fluorine ions and the carbon atoms at about 2.7 angstrom. Okay. So starting from this experimental observation, we tried to determine the uh, molecular environment of carbonate from a molecular point of view. And to that purpose, we used some quantum mechanical uh, modeling techniques that provide uh, the total energy of the system for a given uh, atomic configuration. <laughs> and here, we have tested various atomic configurations. And here, I'm showing you the most stable one uh, that corresponds to a stable uh, defect arrangement uh, in the apatite structure. And this is a stable one at the density functional theory level, um, okay, using the quantum espresso package. Um, and 
for the, the, these defects, okay, here you have the tetroidal sites uh, and the carbonate group occupies the sloping face, the basal sloping face of the tetrahedron, whereas the additional fluorine that is, uh, that is compensating the electrostatic charge of the carbonate group occupies the uh, remaining apex of the tetroidal site. Okay? So initially you had uh, some phosphate site here, and now you have this kind of defect of clumped <coughs> chemical uh, defect. And the theoretical distance here between the carbon and the fluorine uh, is in reasonable agreement with what is experimentally measured because we find a distance of 2.5 angstrom. Um, but of course, y is, uh, you have no direct bonding between this fluorine and the carbon here. Okay? So man now, starting from this, uh, this model, we are able to compute the spectroscopic properties corresponding to this model to compare with experimental observation. So concerning the uh, Fourier transfer infrared spectra, we can compute theoretical spectra uh, from derivative of the total energy of the system with respect to atomic displacements or the application of uh, an uh, electric field. Okay, so here you have the experimental spectrum and here the calculated spectrum. Of course, the major uh, vibrational bands are quite well reproduced in the uh, theoretical spectrum compared to the experimental spectrum. There is a small uh, slight shift systematic shift between the theory and the experiment, because in the theory we have not, no adjustable uh, uh, parameters, okay? So there is some systematic difference, but the relative frequencies, in particular the relative frequencies between these two bands, uh, nicely match the experimental observation, and also the splitting of the uh, uh, stretching uh, CO bands uh, is quite correctly reproduced. Um, and from this uh, kind of theoretical uh, observation, we, are, we have been able also to show that uh, these bands are affected by macroscopic electrostatic effects. That means that the uh, position of these bands could depend on uh, factors such as the carbonate concentration, the particle shapes, and so on. And this explains why uh, these bands are, most, uh, are always uh, much uh, more narrow uh, than uh, these uh, stretching bands. Okay, so uh, this is for the infrared spectroscopy, but we have been also able to compute the uh, NMR ch chemical shift, um, okay, still using the same theoretical uh, framework. Um, so for the uh, carbon 13, uh, we find here the theoretical uh, signal uh, corresponding to the carbonate here, so to the carbon here, which is of course close to the experimental signal, but in this case, the difference, the distinction between uh, B site and A site is not obvious because uh, they, they occur in a quite a narrow range. Um, concerning the fluorine signal, so the channel fluorine ions, F1 and F2, give uh, these two signals as expected for the channel ions. Uh, so this and the fact that th these two ions uh, give a different chemical shift uh, uh, could contribute to explain uh, uh, the, the, the broadening of this line. Okay? But very interesting was the fact that this additional fluorine, the second environment of the fluorine ion, uh, gives this theoretical chemical shift uh, that is not far from uh, the experimental observation. Uh, so in our opinion, uh, the, uh, both uh, uh, NMR and infrared spectroscopy uh, validate uh, the defect model uh, that we propose here. So concerning this clumped uh, chemical defect model, uh, uh, we can uh, ask whether uh, this type of chemical defects is an exception or a rule. And in fact, in a, com a completely uh, another world compared with biominerals, okay, in high temperature minerals, uh, almost at the same time, we also found a very similar defects okay, in this mineral, which is a silicate, a magnesium silicate. Uh, and in this mineral, uh, we found some substitution, sil uh, silicate substitution here by a uh, clumped uh, OH on fluorine defects. Uh, and also we found a very similar configuration compared here uh, to apatite. Here we have the substitution of borate, borate uh, anions, and here you have a compensating hydroxyl group, okay? but here in that case in a high temperature mineral. Okay? So the, 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 the the, the fe our feeling is that, in fact, the important thing here is that the rule is for the local charge, electrostatic charge compensation of the defects, uh, and it seems that it's, uh, it's a general features for these heterovalent molecular substitutions. Okay, so at this point, uh, we uh, can also wonder uh, whether such kind of defects uh, would also apply to hydroxyapatite, uh, okay, because some uh, clumped 
uh, carbonate hydroxyl defect could be also uh, meet the requirements um, that uh, I mentioned for flora, flora apatite uh, and also uh, fluorine for hydroxyl substitution uh, is commonly observed in minerals. Um, so we have investigated various configurations of clumped uh, carbonate hydroxyl in uh, apatite structure. But in fact, from a thermodynamical point of view, this kind of defect is not favored. And the favored defect is a fluorinated white, and it is significantly favored compared to the, the hydroxylated defect. And the reason for uh, this uh, difference is that uh, in this configuration, uh, you can't achieve an efficient uh, hydrogen bonding between this hydro hydroxyl and other oxygen atoms of the structure. So from a thermodynamical point of view, uh, this kind of defect uh, cannot uh, apply uh, to hydroxyapatite. So to conclude about the uh, incorporation of uh, carbonate in the incorporation of carbonate in apatite, uh, uh, I think that we, we found some conclusive evidence that uh, you have really have some uh, local charge conversation of B-type carbonate defect by fluorine ions. And now we have uh, really efficient spectroscopic markers of the transformation of enamel during uh, geological uh, processes. And uh, this transformation is uh, mostly uh, uh, mostly occurs uh, through dissolution precipitation mechanisms. And this is clearly attested here by a, a microscope, a electronic microscope uh, micrograph uh, obtained on a highly altered enamel sample in which you can see the replacement here of the bio biological structure by this filling of fluorapatite. And the important information you can gain here is that the carbonate groups are really incorporated in the newly formed uh, fluorapatite. Okay? And this could be a clue to explain that despite uh, this uh, strong evidence for alteration, uh, it seems that in the samples from these environments, um, the uh, isotopic composition of carbonate group uh, preserves uh, some information about the uh, ecological uh, features of the various animals uh, analyzed. <coughs> so now I turn to the uh, to, to few slides about the, the, the second part of the talk. Uh, which relates to, a, to a, a question that is quite similar from a crystal chemical point of view. And uh, this question uh, is uh, the mechanism of sulfate substitution in carbonate group minerals, because uh, we know that uh, marine calcium carbonates can contain up to about 1% uh, of su sulfate uh, groups. Um, and the, uh, the, the sulfur sulfite isotopic composition can be used uh, to trace uh, the balance, the global balance on the, on the earth surface between a uh, reduced and oxidized form of sulfur uh, along uh, the Phanerozoic uh, geological times. Um, and it, uh, it is interesting to note that uh, initially uh, in the literature, uh, people were using uh, this kind of uh, denomination, structurally substituted sulfate. But in more recent uh, studies, they use carbonate associated sulfate because they had no direct evidence for the real uh, incorporation of this sulfate in the carbonate <coughs> group minerals. Um, and indeed, uh, this substitution uh, requires the replacement of some triangular uh, group by a tetrahedral group. Okay. So we try to uh, address this question uh, but using still uh, theoretical tools. Um, and we uh, <coughs> investigated various models of uh, sulfate incorporation in the major uh, polymorphs of uh, calcium carbonates. Um, so uh, using uh, first principles, quantum me mechanical calculations. Um, in, uh, many in most of the cases, we, we observe some counting of the sulfate group with respect to the orientation of the, of the initial orientation of the carbonate groups. And some, of course, some struct significant structural distortion uh, around the, um, the, the sulfate group uh, that can be uh, then related to the uh, compatibility of sulfate with uh, uh, the carbonate structure. And it seems that uh, sulfate is more easily incorporated in vaterite or calcite and uh, much less easily uh, in aragonite. Uh, these uh, results obtained at the Dantichi functional theory are mostly consistent with the previous studies uh, by Fernandez Diaz et al. Uh, we were using empirical potential uh, modeling, uh, except that concerning vaterite, we uh, did not confirm the we, we did not observe any stabilizing effect of sulfite at low concentration in, uh, in vaterite. Okay. So starting in from these models, it is now possible to compute also the vibrational properties uh, 
of corresponding to this model and compare and, uh, to experimental uh, to uh, to experimental observation, observations uh, if they exist. Uh, okay. So concerning the frequency of the vibrational modes, uh, here we have computed in red the vibrational frequencies of the sulfate in calcite, uh, and we also computed the uh, vibrational frequencies for isolated um, uh, SO2 uh, molecule on anhydrite. Uh, okay. So I have already told you there is some systematic shift between uh, experiment and theory because of the uh, theoretical level, theoretical approximations that we are using. But you can observe that for sulfate in calcite, we have some uh, experimental information about the vibrational frequencies of the sulfate group in calcite. Uh, and the, 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 the theoretical frequencies uh, clearly match the experimental one uh, within uh, experimental or theoretical uh, accuracy. So I think that the comparison on experimental frequency supports indeed the substitution of sulfate groups in calcite. Uh, and structural, uh, structurally substituted sulfate is in of course, is uh, in the end an acceptable uh, designation. Okay. And the second point is that from uh, the vibrational uh, frequencies, we, can, we are able to compute the, the free energy difference related to the isotopic <coughs> substitution, the replacement uh, of uh, sulf sulfur source 2 by sulfur source 4. And what uh, we, we, we obtain using that is that indeed uh, the equi equilibrium isotopic fractionation, so the difference here in the various curves is uh, small among the various, uh, various uh, sulfate species, uh, and the major control on isotopic composition is indeed related to redox change. Here we have incorporated uh, uh, the, the results of an, another study by another group on uh, the aqueous uh, sulfate. So maybe there is a small uh, fractionation here, but I think that the modeling of sulfate in solution has still to be uh, improved to be uh, really sure about this kind of, of fractionation. So to, to conclude, I, I would say that uh, uh, now what we want to do is uh, to uh, better associate this, uh, this atomic scale insight in the status of impurities in uh, biominerals uh, to more mesoscopic uh, approaches and probably to include more bi biology. Uh, and also I think that the, 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 the coupling of isotopic chemistry with detailed chemical crystal chemical investigation is a, is a, is a promising uh, direction uh, to obtain uh, new information on ancient environments. Um, and uh, also it's quite an, an advertisement advertisement, but uh, I think that the density functional theory based uh, methods uh, are really an efficient framework to combine and to reconcile uh, experimental uh, information obt obtained using different techniques uh, on complex real materials such as biominerals. So I would like to, um, to thank the, 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 the funding organization and I would like just to uh, add a, a small information for the PhD students who are in the room is that uh, they are welcome to apply to the prize of the uh, French uh, Mineralogical Society on this year, because this is mineralogy uh, in the broadest sense. Uh, on this year, uh, Julie Cosminis has, been, uh, has won the prize uh, with a thesis on biomineralization of uh, calcium phosphate and uh, iron phosphate. So really in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the field that we are interested in today. So I thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you.